Hello everyone, welcome to Dentison. We are continuing with our lectures on bone and today we are going to discuss the alveolar bone in detail which can be an important theory exam question for you. So let's start before starting quickly subscribe to Dentison and also give a like to this video as I keep making such interesting videos for you. So we have already discussed what is bone, what it is made up of, how it is classified, what how it appears under the microscope in the last video on bone. So please watch that video first so that you can understand alveolar bone in a better way in this video. So we are going to see what it is, what are its parts and how to write for your exam. So let's start. Where are the roots of of our teeth located within the jaws that is within the maxilla and the mandible bones so that part of the maxilla and mandible which provides space for the roots of the teeth is known as alveolar bone so the word alveoli coming from socket socket means the hollow space where something goes so alveolar bone provides the socket for the roots of the teeth it further has two parts the first part of the alveolar bone is the one which immediately surrounds the roots of the teeth the roots ko bilkul pass mein pada hai that is called alveolar bone proper proper and the second part which surrounds this alveolar bone proper and supports it is known as supporting alveolar bone so we can say that alveolar bone has two parts first is alveolar bone proper and second is the supporting alveolar bone supporting alveolar bo bone becomes continuous with the bones of jaws that is maxilla and mandible now let's see what are the further divisions of these two parts first is alveolar bone proper it is further of two parts first is lamellated bone lamellated word comes from the layer so this part of alveolar bone proper is arranged in layers around the central canal which is called aversion canal which has blood vessels this type of arrangement is known as aversion systems or osteons as we discussed in the last video so lamellated bone gives this appearance under the microscope now, what is the second part the part which provides attachment for the bundles of the principal fibers of the pdl so that is why it is called the bundle bone so we can say the first part of alveolar bone that is alveolar bone proper has further two parts lamellated bone and bundle bone now let's have a look at the second part of the alveolar bone that is supporting alveolar bone supporting alveolar bone further is of two parts that is the part which forms the outer and inner plates of this bone this bone are known as the cortical plates cortical plates under microscope have structures similar to the lamellated bone that is they also show haversian systems now second part of supporting alveolar bone is the one which is present between these cortical plates and the alveolar bone proper that part is known as the spongy bone now spongy bone contains trabeculae small pieces of the bone surrounding the spaces those spaces are known as narrow spaces so this is called trabecular bone or cancellous bone or spongy bone which under microscope appears like this so basically it has same composition as the compact bone of the cortical plates but the arrangement is different so we have seen that our alveolar bone has two parts first is alveolar bone proper and second is supporting alveolar bone alveolar bone proper is further of two types lamellated bone and bundle bone supporting alveolar bone further is of two types that is outer and inner cortical plates and central spongy bone now let's see how to write for your exam so we'll discuss definition functions development of bone and structure in detail so first the definition so alveolar bone is also called alveolar process to define it we already know what it is it is that part of maxilla and mandible which forms and supports the sockets of the teeth that is it forms that space for housing the teeth and also supports the roots with the help of the fibers so that is the definition and with that we have got two functions as well that is first function is it houses the roots provides space for them and it supports them that is anchors them attaches them with the help of sharpies fibers what else it can do it can also help the movement of the teeth for better occlusion that is when teeth contact the opposite teeth and also it absorbs and distributes the occlusal forces which are placed over the teeth they are taken by this alveolar bone it also provides blood vessels for the periodontal ligament and it also houses the developing permanent teeth by supporting primary teeth the primary teeth when the permanent teeth develop they provide space for them also and they organizes the eruption of teeth when the teeth erupt their movement is also helped by the alveolar bone so so many functions of alveolar bone so do you think it can develop without teeth no so alveolar bone starts developing when the teeth germs starts developing within the bones of maxilla and mandible then the bones form between these teeth and divide them into compartments so bony septa form here and divide them into the sections into compartments within these bony compartments they also have the nerves and the blood vessels and these two germs within these bony compartments they start moving with the growth of the jaws when the jaws are growing to adjust themselves they start moving and because of their movement what is happening bony remodeling remodeling means both formation as well as resorption of bone is taking place 
So around these tooth jumps, bony remodeling happens because of which the bone starts getting adapted around these tooth jumps, and that is how alveolar process forms. But the major changes in alveolar process occur when the roots of the teeth develop and the teeth starts to erupt. So till now we are looking at the occlusal picture that is from above what is happening to the, around the tooth jump. Now let's have a look from the front or from the side when the root starts developing. So when the roots of the teeth develop, what is happening to alveolar process? So roots develop, alveolar process increases in height. And with that, the dental follicle cells, they start forming periodontal ligaments, cementum and alveolar, alveolar bone proper. And these PDL fibers get attached to the bone and that is how alveolar bone forms. So we can say that in strict sense, it develops only during the eruption of teeth and it grows in two ways. That is a part of it gradually that is slowly incorporated into the body of maxilla and mandible here. And the part of it grows rapidly that is at its free borders. Let's have a look at its free borders where it is growing rapidly. So the tissue here that is at the crest, alveolar crest, that means peak, that is topmost point of the alveolar bone, that tissue shows characteristics of both cartilage and bone and it is called chondroid bone. So, we can say that alveolar process forms with the development and eruption of teeth. So, do you think it will be there if teeth are not there? No, it will not be there. And what happens if the teeth are lost? So, alveolar process will diminish in height. That is, there will be reduction in its height when the teeth are lost. So, now coming to the structure of alveolar bone. Now, it is similar in composition to the bone. That is, it has both inorganic and organic component. Organic is mainly collagen type 1. But also, it has 3, 5 and 12 collagen. Sharpie fibers which are here in the bone they contain type 3 collagen along with type 1 and type 12 is expressed when there is mechanical strain over the bone type 3 and 12 are expressed by the fibroblast cells of the periodontal ligament whereas 1 5 and 12 are expressed by the osteoblast cells of the bone now coming to the parts of the alveolar bone we already know the two parts the first part alveolar bone proper further is made up of two parts that is thin lamellae of bone surrounding the root of the teeth that is called lamellated bone and the other part which gives attachment to principal fiber bundles is called the bundle bone now alveolar bone proper total thickness is 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 millimeter now the second part is the supporting alveolar bone which surrounds the alveolar bone proper and gives support to the socket so it further has two parts that is outer and inner cortical plates and the and the other part of bone is spongy bone which is present in between these cortical plates and the alveolar bone proper. So now let's discuss these two parts in detail. First alveolar bone proper and first part lamellated bone. So it is made up of osteons under the microscope. We see Haversian canal surrounded by the concentric lamellae. Now some of the lamellae of lamellated bone they are arranged parallel to the marrow spaces. So this is the lamellated bone of the alveolar bone proper. And some of these lamellae form the Haversian systems like this. Now coming to the second part that is bundle bone. Now bundle bone is why it is called bundle bone. That can be important by our question because of the bundles of the principal fibers which continue here and they become Sharpie's fibers here. And other features of this bundle bone, the fibrils here are arranged perpendicular to the Sharpie's fibers and they are lesser in number compared to the lamellated bone. That is why this part of the alveolar bone proper, it appears darker under H and E stained sections. But the fibers here get mineralized at the periphery at the periphery they get mineralized they are larger diameter and they are less numerous than on the cemental side of the pdl now some areas alveolar bone proper consists mainly of bundle bone and this bundle bone is formed when the there is recent bone apposition recently where the bone has formed there we can see this and because osteoblasts have formed so osteoblasts have also taken rest in between in during the formation so we can also see their resting lines here that is lines of rest which appears as blue lines in the microscope so those are the features of bundle bone so we have discussed these two parts now let's see more features of alveolar bone prop in the in the radiograph alveolar bone proper is given a special term that is called lamina dura so that is the radiographic appearance of alveolar bone proper and that is your viva question lamina means layer dura means thick so it appears as a thick white line as we can see here why it is seen like this because of increased radio opacity due to presence of thick bone here without any trabeculation so that is the reason and what is not the reason that is there is no increased mineral content in this bone that is mineral content is similar to the other bones but the reason for this radio opacity is because of the thicker bone and that is very important by our question what is radiographic appearance of alveolar bone proper and why it is seen like that now Another term, another important question related to alveolar bone proper is what is its other name? Now, this alveolar bone proper, its inner wall has many openings as we can see here. These openings carry the branches of the interalveolar nerves 
and blood vessels which from the bone goes to the periodontal ligament so because of this numerous openings perforations in its inner wall it is called cribriform plate very very important viva question other name for alveolar bone proper because of numerous openings is cribriform plate now the bone which is present between the teeth is called interdental septum and the bone which is present between the roots of the same teeth is called interradicular septum now these septae of bone can also contain canals which are called canals of zucker candle and hirschfeld that can be your viva question these are nutrient canals they have arteries veins lymph and nerves so those are some more points about the alveolar bone proper now coming to the second part that is supporting alveolar bone which further is of two types cortical plates and spongy bone first cortical plates so cortical plates are two that is outer and inner cortical plates. Plates and they are consisting of compact bone that is a version system and they are thicker in mandible than in maxilla that can be your viva question and in mandible also they are thickest in the premolar and molar regions here and that too on the buccal side of the mandible than compared to the lingual side so that is important viva question now what about the anterior teeth in anterior teeth these cortical plates they fused they are fused with the alveolar bone proper as compared to the posterior teeth if we see the posterior teeth there is cortical plate and there is alveolar bone proper and in between them there is spongy bone but no spongy bone is seen in the anterior teeth so here they are directly fused and bone underlying the gingiva is the cortical plate because it is covered cortical plates are covered by gingiva from the outside and both of these cribriform plate that is alveolar bone proper this alveolar bone proper and the cortical plates they are made up of compact bone that is seen as compact bone in the microscope that is they show haversian system and the spongy bone which is present between these two shows trabeculae in the microscope so histologically we can say cortical plates show haversian system so you can draw this diagram now coming to the second part spongy bone so spongy bone fills the spaces between the alveolar bone proper and the cortical plates as we have seen this is alveolar bone proper and this is the cortical plates so in between two we have this spongy bone so spongy bone is made up of trabeculae of bone lamellar bone that is arranged in layers only but in bony pieces in trabeculae and surrounding these trabeculae we have marrow spaces so these spaces are called the marrow spaces so in histology it will appear like this these marrow spaces contain pluripodal mesenchymal cells and adipocytes that is fat cells also these trabeculae of bone have so many cells that is inside these trabeculae we have osteocytes and on their surface if we see we can see two types of cells that is osteoblast bone forming cells and osteoblast bone resorbing cells now what is the function of this spongy bone it buttresses the functional forces which are placed over the alveolar bone proper so whatever forces masticatory forces or occlusal forces are placed over the alveolar bone proper those are supported by the spongy bone from below now this spongy bone component is more in maxilla compared to mandible that is opposite of cortical bone if you remember cortical bone is thicker in mandible and spongy bone component is more in maxilla now under the radiograph this spongy bone can be classified into two types based on its arrangement these trabeculae when they are arranged regularly and they are horizontal arrangement they show horizontal arrangement like this in the radiograph then it is showing ladder like arrangement like this it is called type 1 spongy bone and this spongy bone pattern is seen in mandible it is called trajectory pattern type 2 would be when they are irregularly arranged trabeculae in the radiograph and they are numerous and delicate and this is seen in maxilla and trajectory pattern is absent now the place where this alveolar bone proper this alveolar bone proper and the cortical plates meet that place is called the crest of the bone that is alveolar crest that is p and this alveolar crest is about 1.5 to 2 mm below the cemento enamel junction of the tooth and that can be your viva and entrance question so we have come to the summary of alveolar bone definition it is that part of maxilla and mandible which forms and supports the teeth sockets it has multiple functions it develops with the eruption of the teeth with the root formation and eruption of teeth it has two parts first is alveolar bone proper which further is of two parts lamellated bone and bundle bone lamellated bone shows a version system in the microscope bundle bone because it provides attachment for the bundles of the principal fibers of pdl second part of alveolar bone supporting alveolar bone it also has two parts that is outer and inner cortical plates which also show a version system like lamellated bone and the second is spongy bone which is present in the center which shows trabeculae of bone and these are the microscopic pictures which you can draw then coming to the radiographic appearance now radiographic term for alveolar bone proper special term which is given is lamina dura thick white line and radiographic appearance of spongy bone can be two type 1 when the trabeculae are regularly arranged seen in mandible and type 2 when the trabeculae are irregularly arranged seen in maxilla
so that is all and now let's check what have you learned so the first question because of many openings in its wall alveolar bone proper is also known as so what is other name for alveolar bone proper because of perforations in its wall also you must know what are the two main parts of alveolar bone and what are the further divisions of these two parts and then second question that alveolar bone proper radiographic appearance what is the special term radiographic term for alveolar bone proper used only for the radiographic appearance then the third what is the arrangement of trabeculae in type 1 spongy bone and type 2 spongy bone and in which bones are they seen so that is all if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling and good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye